Hey, aloha, everyone. Michelle Melendez with BlossomInnerWellness.com, StandTogetherHawaii.com. This is also on the voice of Kona Radio, 100.5 FM. Mahalo for joining. Uh, if you are joining me on YouTube, please check your subscription because I have gotten uh, messages saying that people are getting unsubscribed, which is totally happening. Uh, if this call, if this video, if you like it, please like, give a comment. I'd love to know how what you think about it. But this uh, video here and audio recording is going to be on is communism in the United States and Hawaii. And Hawaii is really not part of the United States, but that's a whole different video. But I'm going to be showing you an interview that Carl Tuckerson did with a Chinese woman. Absolutely blew my mind and so grateful for the courage of this woman. And let me go ahead and share my screen and get started. Oh, but I want to share before. My sponsor, uh, I do this on my own time and I'm really grateful for my sponsor, aceofcoins.com, A-C-E-O-F-C-O-I-N-S.com. If you want to learn how to lower your taxes, if you want to have eliminate your taxes, if you want to have better accounting for better profitability, if you want to learn how to um, license your biometric data, which is your face, which big tech is using right now, you can actually license it so you own your own image and people will have to pay you, <clears throat> excuse me, if they're going to use it. Uh, and also, if you want to learn how to get cryptocurrency tax-free, please go to aceofcoins.com and let them know that Michelle sent you. Okay, you guys, much mahalo for that. And let's get started with the um, understanding uh, this amazing, courageous woman, Chinese woman who lived through the Cultural Revolution, which I will share what that is if you've never heard it, because I didn't, uh, didn't understand this, but uh, this is amazing. Here's what she has to say about this. Oop, sorry. Sorry, I forgot to share the um, audio. So let me do that really quick share video so she's talking about 2020 and blm and uh hope you guys know who uh funds blm blm burning our cities i said this is no longer some kind of troubling sign here there this i do is... want to start this over one more time because i want you to hear exactly what she says about uh here we go yeah uh, uh, 2020 when I saw the Antifa and the BMM burning our, our cities, I said, this is no longer some kind of troubling sign here, there. This is a full blowing Marxist revolution. This is exactly what I noticed uh, or what I witnessed during the Cultural Revolution. During the, said, I got to do something. During the Cultural Revolution. So let me just um, go, ahead, go ahead and close these out, but I want to open this. Because what is the Cultural Revolution? The Cultural Revolution, formerly known as a great proletarian culture rev cultural revolution, as was a socio-political movement in the People's Republic of China. It was launched by Mao Zedong in 1966 and lasted until its death in 1976. It its stated goal was to preserve Chinese communism by purging remnants of capitalist and traditional elements of the Chinese society. This is what she lived through. She lived through, um, she basically lived through them going and uh, murdering people that didn't agree with them, taking the children, indoctrinating them into the beliefs and the culture of the new, uh, of the cultural revolution of what Ming and the Red Guard and were uh, telling them was the way to live life. So let's go ahead and I'm going to keep going with her. And uh, share again. Oh, let me close that out. Sorry, press the wrong button. Let's go here again. <clears throat> Actually, first I need to do a screen share. So let me do that again. Okay, screen share. Mahalo so much, everyone. So the next part I want to go to because she's talking about how BL B BLM. When she saw that, she realized that that was this is full blown cultural revolution and who funds blm is george soros that is you can actually look it up he funds them you guys it was not something that just people said oh i'm gonna start this because it's the right thing to do no it was funded and created by george soros and 2402 we're gonna go over here 2402 
Oh, okay. So let me let me um tell you guys what's going on here. This is a table of minority women. Very these these women are not poor and by by any stretch of the imagination. And the other side is white women, and they're having a conversation about race. And here's uh, and they, they, the white women, literally, th these are kind women, kind hearted women, they want to do what's right. They love people, they want people to like them, you know, so so they, they want to, uh, to be liked and to do what what is the right thing to do. And they're having this conversation. And here's what one of the minority women said, uh, after she had a conversation with the white woman. It's uh, kind of, it's extremely, extremely disgusting, but here we go. The way you just spoke to me was straight up white supremacy. You actually just answered with racism. White supremacy so is said to be hidden in innocuous phrases and banal behavior. Oh. behavior. The smallest things could be considered racist. It's enough that a person from a minority group feels insulted. Absolutely. Sounding terribly white. I don't know that I was all that racist to start with, but I also would be more aware or hyper aware of my thoughts or reactions to circumstances that would be racist. <laughs> so I want to stop it right there. You are responsible for how somebody else feels. Granted, there's being rude and there's being inconsiderate, absolutely. But but this is this is this is leading people toward, oh, you can't say that. Oh, don't don't say that. Oh, don't think that about that person. Okay, w this is being taught to us when you are a child and you are playing with somebody. It doesn't matter what you don't notice their color. You just want to play Barbie dolls. You just want to play in the sand. But this is this is being taught. This is this is indoctrination of of adults of adult white women who just want to be liked, who just you know feel you know insecure, who who just you know want to do what's right, and this is all about control. So let's hear what the Chinese lady. That's my opinion. Let's hear what the Chinese woman has to say about this. Screen share, and this is um. 2512 is where we're going here. But everyone have to go through the gentler form of struggle session, and that's called criticism and self-criticism. So as kids, we will have that kind of a struggle session every week. And we will sit together and after you know referring some of the mouse quotes and we will uh, criticize self, you will start with yourself. And you would say, and uh, I did this and that, not quite up to the requirement by Mao's instruction. And, uh, and, and I still have this bourgeois influence in me. And, uh, and then everyone will join and say, yes, you're right. You did this and this that day. You said this and this that day. And then we go around. So we struggle against others and we're against ourselves. So to get rid of every little incorrect thoughts from our mind. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So that's what she's talking about, the culture of evolution. That's what she was raised in. And right before she says this, I'll stop the screen. Right before she, she shares what was happening with self-criticism and being criticized by others because you're doing what's wrong, what's considered wrong, she was actually saying that the Red Guard were going in and murdering uh, authoritarian people in like uh, principals in schools and and um, and uh, and t teachers and things like that and these are also coming from this this harm was also coming happening from the kids who were indoctrinated with this this mentality with this way of believing so what is happening in the schools they're being indoctrinated. That's why I get your kids out of the schools. Find a way to do it. If you don't know of a way to do it, then pray about it. Because I, every time I get stuck, I say, okay, universe, I don't know how this is going to work out. How you, you get to show me how this is going to work out. And I get to watch as it works out for me. Ask that. Universe, I don't know how to pull my child out of school. But I get to watch as you put things in my path that lead me to the easiest and most abundant way to pull my child out of school so that they are learning 
things about love and about connection and about inner power and self-esteem. All of this is meant to put you down and meant to have you think that you are not good enough. You are not doing what's right. Other people, uh, their thoughts and their feelings are more important than you. You're not responsible for how somebody feels. That's how they feel. That's their responsibility. That's their kuleana. Your responsibility is for yourself, doing what is right and being a kind, loving person, but doing what is right and speaking the truth. And if you're not liked, they don't like you. That's okay, you guys. That is okay because doing what is right is more important and being kind also, but let's just keep going. Let's just keep going. Okay, and we're going here and we're going to 2625. This was an amazing interview, Mahalo uh, Carl Tucker, Tucker Carlson. Identical, right? Identity politics. That's exactly what it is. In China, it started with class. Yes. And they divide the whole population into two classes, red class and the black class. And you can figure out pretty much what it means. Red, uh, the correct class, and the black is the incorrect class. Those are the uh, property owners, landlords, or people with bourgeois uh, worldview. They're all black class. So they are the enemy of the state. They are the enemy of the state to actually have your own opinion and be thinking about uh, your own freedom and just be talking to somebody, just have a regular conversation instead of, instead of censoring your own words because you're afraid to offend them because they're a different race, you know, and uh, you're an enemy of the state. So am I an enemy of the state? Yeah, probably, but well, you know, this is, this is where we're at. So what is our Kuliana? It's a step up, speak the truth, let people know this because this is here in the United States and definitely here in Hawaii. And I'm going to go to the next part of her, of her um, sharing, which I'm super grateful for this woman right now, because this is, this is the time we don't have years. We have months, maybe a year or two max. Uh, and this is it, you guys. So, so step up. This is where you guys step into your power and do what you know is right and go to your school boards to 52. Here we go. We'll start here. Three thirty fifty. 50 just the repeat of the Cultural Revolution. During the Cultural Revolution, I witnessed students and teachers again, turned against each other. We changed school names to be politically correct. Um, we were taught to denounce our heritage. The Red Guards destroyed anything that is not communist. Old uh, statues, books, and anything else. <clears throat> we are also encouraged to report on each other, just like the uh, Student Equity Ambassador Program and the Bias Reporting System. This is indeed the American version of the Chinese communist, the Chinese cultural revolution. The critical race theory has its roots in cultural Marxism. It should have no place in our school. Amen. Amen to that. She, she went and spoke that was at a school board, a school board where she shared that. And thank God she did. And thank God she's, she wrote um, uh, some books and also is sharing with Tucker Carlson. So the next part I want to do is 34.51 here. Uh, conclusion, that's critical thinking, right? When you have only one information, you can't think. I can yeah. only think one way. That's mouse way. That's the correct way. And I have been like that for a long time. Some people will say that they see through things during the cultural, not me. I'm totally into it. I'm totally accept everything I was told, no matter how absurd it, it was, I accept it. Because party can't be wrong. Mao can't be wrong. You've so, <laughs> you know, the, the one party is like looking at the news, the, co the COVID thing, the, the whole thing, this one storyline, this one narrative because nobody else is looking deeper. And this is what she said. She was she was completely entrenched in it. And I was too, many, many years ago, about eight or nine years ago, you know, I would have probably taken the, the thingy majigger in my arm because I was like, no way would our government hurt us. No way. 9-11, that totally happened. 
the way that the, the narrative went down. And then my my boyfriend at the time showed me a video. It was um, Zeitgeist uh, and, and Money Masters, 1996. And I looked at that and I cried. And then my eyes out like somebody died because I died because I realized my life was not what I thought it was. I was not, this was, this government was not what I thought it was. And I was depressed. I couldn't get out of bed for three days. And then finally, I'm like, what do we do? And at the time, there was nothing to do. But now there is, and it's called Help Wake People Up, because even the most indoctrinated person right now is questioning why in the world, what is going on here? They are cutting off children's boys' penises, transgender mutilation, these mutilation um, surgeries. And they're letting 10-year-olds not tell their parents. Like, you have to question this stuff. And who's going to stop it? You guys, I don't believe, I believe we are the white hats. Okay. I believe we are the white hats. So please, uh, I'm going to do one more uh, share. I think it's one, one more, it might be two, but let me do, let me just show you one more thing that's just this amazing woman. It's two more, two more things that, that she has to say, which is absolutely incredible. And again, if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe or check that you're subscribed because people are <laughs> getting unsubscribed from my channel it is really really decades in the making in america after the uh, um the 60s uh when the marxists took over all universities they have been creating generations not just one generation generations of marxists or people who absolutely um follow that those ideologies now they are in our institutions in every institutions including educational system corporations, uh, government, and even our military. It is everywhere. So I always say that the infiltration of uh, communism is complete in this country. And, and she said it's complete in this country, but it's, it hasn't taken power yet. It's complete in the sense that we have bills like SB 33A1 being put through in the Hawaii Islands, but hopefully not because they did defer that bill to today and they're voting on it as I speak or are in the meeting with that bill. Uh, this bill is going to take over the entire west coast of Maui. This bill would if it passes, would take over the entire west coast of Maui. I don't believe that Hawaii Islands, Hawaii, is going to stand for it. I don't believe that we as as people here on the islands are going to let this happen. And I believe that it is going to be stopped. This this bill, uh, they, they're going to, this bill is basically going to do anything and everything possible to get financial aid from the federal government and any other organization which opens the door for fraud and bribery. They will have power to create rules for health and safety, which is, we all know what that means. And they are going to f uh, fine, um, uh, assess fees for land users to help pay for this board, which actually has millions and millions of dollars being allocated to it. So a lot of control that this board will have over the complete West Coast of Maui, and they are going to first and foremost honor their stakeholders who they don't tell anybody who that is. It just says stakeholders in the bill. So stuff like this is happening all over the country. And our job is to, is to look at our planning departments, see what they're doing, go to the legislative meetings, look at what your legislative body is doing. That's what's really, really important. I have one more thing to share and then we'll do a quick prayer because you guys, we got this. I know this sounds scary, but I totally believe this is our journey and that we are here to have a spiritual awakening of inner strength. That's why this is scary. And also um, uh, increasing our intuition, increasing our intuition. And what that is, is faith. When you have faith and you know in your heart that things are going to work out, you're, you, are, you are increasing your intuition. You're making it stronger because you're feeling into the infinite possibilities that's all around you. And I'll talk more about that in a moment. Oh, I am I share, screen sharing? Yes, your screen is sharing. Okay, good. But many times I do feel like there's a great hope. 
I have been invited to talk to so many people around the country, and I met people who are parents who never involved politically, just like me, but they are involved now. They're fighting. They're fighting in the trenches. And uh, so I say there's a hope. There's a great hope. And uh, we can't just fight because we kind of figure we might win. To me, we have to fight because we believe in it. And what I believe in is America. And so there's no choice but to fight. People who grow. There's no choice. There's no choice. I believe in, in America, in the United States of America, but we're not in the United States of America. The United States of America is not the government. The government is the United States corporation. This is why they don't say America. They always say the United States, the United States, the United States. That's not America. I believe in America. You believe in America. So our kuleana in this spiritual game, which we are in a, in this these bodies to have a spiritual journey. And when you are afraid and you do something anyway, it grows you. It grows your spirit. You get stronger. And each one of us is that is happening to each one of us. So please share this video, like it, subscribe, make sure that you're subscribed. Mahalo for that. And trust in this higher power and start to start to strengthen your own intuition. We have six senses. The sixth sense is your intuition. This is that that feeling that you know someone's going to call or you know you shouldn't go somewhere or you know you should do something. It's, it's that is what we are growing stronger every single day when we trust it. We trust this intuition. This space around us, this space around me, this is an empty. This is a frequency field. And my alarm's going off, so I'm going to turn that off. But um, this is a frequency field of, of infinite possibilities. So when we drop in and we let go of fear, because fear keeps you down, it keeps your vibration low. If you let go of fear and you trust in something greater that's beating your heart and breathing your body, that's strengthening your intuition. So let's go ahead and do that. Great spirit, infinite intelligence of all things. This is quite the journey that we all came to play together because this is a game. We never truly die. Our energy and our consciousness are never gone. It just changes form. But in this form, in this dense world of the third dimension, we know that these communist parties, this fascist regime and of, of authoritarianism is melting, is being dissolved. And we get to watch Great Spirit as it's unfolded, as they peaceably are removed from office or they voluntarily step down. We get to watch as that happens. As this United States corporation is dissolved and turns back into the um, America that we know it to be, the America that each one of us loves in our heart, even if you're not American and from this country, America had this dream and has this dream of freedom, of peace, of harmony, of unity, of the American dream of being free to do what you love to do, being free to to worship in whatever way that you want to worship, being free to love who you want to love, being free to be yourself. And we know that that American dream is inside each one of us. And we know, Great Spirit, that you are guiding our, our hearts and our actions, that you are guiding our speech when it is our time to speak the truth, that you are guiding our pens when we sign things and we say no. You are guiding us, Great Spirit, and we know that each one of us has the courage to do whatever it is that we need to do to bring back this world into harmony and into balance of peace and in unity and prosperity for all people. We know that this world is free and we know that all children, all keiki around the world are waking up, having more hope, having more inner strength for themselves, knowing that this world is going to be a better place. And every single person Around the world, right now, our hearts are beating with one heartbeat of humanity, one heartbeat together, unified. And this heartbeat is run by you, Great Spirit, infinite intelligence, that you're beating our heart, you're breathing each one of our bodies right now. And we know that this journey is ours to take. We chose this journey, and we wouldn't be here if we didn't win. So we just honor this guidance in our path right here, right now, today, and every day. And so it is. So sending you so much love and from Aloha.
from the Big Island of Hawaii. Much aloha. And also please share, like, and subscribe. And again, Ace of Coins is my sponsor. So if you have tax issues, accounting, accounting stuff, want to license your biometric data, want to learn how to get cryptocurrency tax-free, please go to aceofcoins.com. The link is in the description. And just let them know Michelle sent you. Much aloha.